Okay, this time around, we want to talk about the blend tool. I sometimes refer to it as the morph tool, uh, uh, one shape to another. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, it's about three quarters of the way down here in your tool box, right here. Okay, the blend tool. First thing I'm going to do is do a couple of simple shapes that we're going to blend together. I'll do a, uh, let's see, a star here and I will put a fill on it but I'm going to not put a stroke you can just see the effect of the blending a little bit easier without a stroke it would make a big difference if you decide you did want to put it on there <clears throat> and then I'm gonna make a second shape and I'll just do a simple polygon give it a different color okay yep. Fill, give it a different color, all right. Now, um, when we um, want to use the blend tool, there are two different ways that it functions. And um, I believe we talked about this in other videos. Almost all of the tools in the toolbox, if you double click on the tool, or you pick the tool and then come over and double click on the uh, canvas, you're generally going to get a dialog box that affects how that tool behaves. Okay, And in this case, that's what I did. I double clicked on the tool. It gives me the dialog box. It has the blending options. And there's uh, primarily two different ways that this works. One with smooth color and then one with specified steps. Smooth color and specified steps. We're going to stick with smooth color for the moment and we'll come back to this and look at how that differs from the specified steps way of doing things. Okay? So we'll say okay. All right. What you need to do, it's very simple. Um, you need to select both objects. <clears throat> then we go to the tool. And we have to click on an anchor point um, on the tool. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, an anchor point on the first shape. Um, it can be any anchor point. Um, clicking on different places will cause the morphing or the blending to be a little bit different. Um, and so I think if you play around with that, you'll realize that's the case. But at any rate, I'll just click once with the tool on the top of the uh, anchor point of the star. I click that one time. Then I move to the second object. Again, both objects were already selected and click on the second one and there you see the result. <clears throat> Again, uh, pretty cool uh, the way it works. You simply select both objects. You, um, of course, have the blend tool. You click on an anchor point on the first object, click. Go to an anchor point on the second object, click, and it will finish the blending. And um, then notice right now uh, with it selected, there's this line running down the middle, kind of down the spine of this thing. And if you, um, I'm going to deselect, deselect it, and then come back and try and grab um, that anchor point of that spine. And um, uh, you need to select just one end of it like this with the white arrow click on that white one anchor point and then um, I can change the direction and the way the image um, functions and sits in space and um, so um, again what we do there is you've got to select that <clears throat> that spine and then go to the end anchor point with the white arrow click on that and then by dragging that you can change how the blending works. It's really that simple. Um, so uh, back again um, to the two basic uh, images and this time let's look at doing the tool the other way with specified steps. So uh, I'll double click on the uh, tool. Okay. 
And instead of smooth color, I'm going to say specified steps. Specified steps, right there. Okay? And choose that. <clears throat> now, the way this thing works is that instead of it being a smooth transition from one shape to the other, it's going to put a certain number of the shapes in between. And so you have to, of course, tell it how many you want to add. I'm going to just say um, five. All right, let's just say five. And so I'll click five right there. I'll say OK. And then once again, I click on an anchor point of the first object, click on an anchor point of the second object, and there you see what it did. And um, we can, uh, once again, by choosing different anchor points on the two images, you're going to get different kinds of things going on and happening. Looks a little bit like an Escher, Escher painting for some of you who are familiar with um, his work, um, the great painter from the 40s. And once again, um, as I indicated before, um, that line down the spine, um, by selecting that and then grabbing the anchor point on either end with the white arrow, you can change the direction and essentially the layout and placement of the image <coughs> in space. So again, uh, very simple to pull this off. The only difference is that we want to go to the dialog box and say specified steps. Put how many of them you want in there, say OK, and then again, click on the one anchor point, click on the second anchor point. You have to have both objects already selected, and there you see your, um, your morphing, okay? Um, now, there's also uh, another way that this tool can be used that's very, very effective. Um, it saves uh, a lot of time. Let's just say um, um, I'm putting windows in the side of a building. Let's just uh, pretend that's what I'm about to do here. And I'm going to keep it very simple. So let's just say this is um, the first window or column. It can be anything you want, of course. Okay. And then um, let's say, um, you know, I've drawn the rest of my building and I want um, the last one to be right over here on the right. So I'm going to duplicate my first window, do what you already have learned, option, click, shift, keep it lined up and drag it over. And let's just pretend that this is the first and this is the last window. And I want to put some windows in between and what I want to do is have the computer do it for me. I could sit here and put them in manually and putz around with trying to get them all lined up, but the computer can just do it beautifully and in seconds. So with the blending tool. So once again, <clears throat> I select both shapes. Then um, again, I go to the tool and once again, I want specified steps. I've got two of them. Let's say I want four more windows. So I'm going to add four more. Again, I plug that number in and I say four more. And then I say OK. And once again, I click on uh, the corresponding anchor point on the first one, pick the same anchor point on the second one, and there they are. And so what you've done is instead of sitting here and doing this manually, even with the uh, transform and the option drag, you'd still have to figure out the spacing in between and do guidelines, and here the machine just did all the work for us. So again, all I did was essentially um, I did my, uh, my first shape, Option, click, shift, create the last shape, activate both of them, go to the tool. I want four of them in between. I say OK, click on the first, click on the second, and there they are. And um, it saves you a lot of time and energy, and um, it's a pretty nifty little tool um, for accomplishing some amazing tasks in a very simple way.